So, yes. so, you, so you got Wazoo, Oregon State, Oregon, Colorado, and UCLA, Utah. Is there a, a, a favorite play you have from any of those three games? Anyone? Jeff, I'll let you start. Oh, Pac, yeah, my Pac-12 Pac teams. Dean. I'll get to my I'll get to my best bet later in the show, which will involve one of these games. Not Oregon, Sammy. It's not Oregon. I promise you. My best bet. Yeah, um, right. I, I like Utah on this spot here. The number's four and a <laughs> half right now, and um, I it, this was I think without Cam Rising playing is is the number. If he comes back, which I do believe he will play this weekend for Utah, uh, I think this this game could be a touchdown uh, or more for Utah on this win. Also, it's worth noting, guys. This is something to, to look at in some of these games. Dante Moore is UCLA's quarterback. It's his first true road start. Playing San Jose does not count. He's going to Rice Eccles Stadium, where Utah has not lost a home game, I think, since 2017, maybe early 2018. It's a place where teams go to die. It's a hard place to play. And if Cam Rising comes back, that crowd's going to be even more lively. The team will be even more for Utah. We looked at the last 16 freshmen, true freshmen or retro freshmen, to play in Utah. They're 3-13 and 13 straight up. They average about 50% completion percentage, 175 yards, and just as many interceptions as touchdowns. It's a hard place to play. So it's a play on Utah, but also a, a little bit of a fate of UCLA here. How about an under in that game? Just because, like you said, UCLA with a young quarterback. Um, you know, UCLA is actually a little better on defense. You think of UCLA, it's all offense, no defense. They're actually, I think, much improved on defense. And on the other side of the ball, you're going to have either an inexperienced quarterback with Utah or a banged up or a rusty quarterback with rising. So uh, 52 and a half right around there, right around a key number. That's another game I'd probably look at it under. Jeff, when you say the words yeah, Cam I rising the in the same sentence, like you have to lay four and a half right now. I mean, depending on when you listen to this, you probably want to get down on Utah as soon as possible because once we see on the ticker or on Twitter that Cam Rising is in, that thing is going to get blasted and then Six. everybody's going to chase that move. Yeah. So it's going to get to seven probably. And then, yes. as you know, Bear, people are going to come back the other way and take the Bruins plus the seven. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. I think. Uh, Will hit on it defensively, the new coordinator, and Latou is a stud. Like, yeah. it, it's interesting because we, I think we saw, even against Florida, Utah had some injuries in that game. Their offensive line is not what we've seen in the past from, from right. Utah. They've been a little bit more of a, a, a pass type team. So, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's my, maybe it's my friendship blinding me a little bit, my friendship with Chip. I don't want to against him you don't here have but to. the under the under is in all three of utah's games by the way uh so it's a good and having been close to, yeah and we have it hasn't really been close um all right sammy you want to talk about oregon now sammy since i have the opportunity to do so um oregon is is going to win this game by a lot of points i, I don't know if i'm going to lay the 21 i try not to bet on my on my own team very often um but i went back and specifically watched colorado's offense on film i want to do this properly like my football lens here I'm going to be very disappointed if Oregon's defensive line and secondary do not control this game. Like, they have the opportunity to do that. Shadur Sanders is fantastic. He will get his in this game. He, he will play well. But he will also get hit a bunch. Colorado's allowed a bunch of sacks. They're playing the best defense they've played so far this season. And on the other side of the ball, Colorado can't do very much on defense, and they're without their best corner. Oregon is the second most efficient offense in all of football. They score a ton of points. And they haven't even played, in my opinion, their A game against a good team. Against Texas Tech, I thought it was a C offensive performance. Sammy, I, I know I'm, I'm Oregon homer, but I do think it's going to be a rough game for the Buffs. I think there's no coincidence that Colorado goes from minus 24 to plus 21. I mean, we're talking about a 45-point swing from a dog to a favorite, and that's justified. And I think the real conversation, Will, we should have is how much is Travis Hunter worth? Because I think it's Great sort question. of – it's tough for the average person to quantify, and I'm not trying to talk down on anybody, but when you think about a number that opened Oregon 17 and immediately got hit to 20 and a half and 21, he's their best defensive back, so he guards the best receiver on the other team. And then how many times against TCU and against Colorado State did Shadur Sanders look for Travis Hunter on third and five and third and six? So, you know, if a quarterback is worth four or five, a good quarterback in college, the best two-way player on a Pac-12 team is probably worth a touchdown, which would tell you that this number 21 is probably still a little bit light. And, you know, we've been talking about Colorado for, for a month now. This is probably the game where they get exposed in the trenches. It hasn't happened yet, but Oregon has NFL guys on the O-line and on the D-line, and Colorado just hasn't seen that yet. This could be that game where, realistically, they're down 28-7 at half. Forget the final. They could be down 21 at half. Half? Half? Maybe, maybe, maybe starting to say, I'm looking right now, I'm looking to see what the Oregon 
Oregon team total is. I don't know. If it's, it's 48 and a half, I think. It's it's a lot of points. Um, but, but it's 48 and a half? I know. 40, I mean. And, and also, too, there's, there's two I things might. to consider here. Um, Colorado Ooh, leads there. the country in pre-snap penalties, and they're going to one of the loudest places in all the country that they have not prepared for. I know they're playing crowd noise at, 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 camp, at practice. So what? Everyone does that. It's not a big surprise. But you now you're going to Austin. I thought that, I thought that was is, Dion dotting no. the eyes and crossing the T's. He was the only one. That yeah, the only one that, that tweet was pretty funny. And then secondly, um, in some of these matchups, when you are playing teams that you recruit against, and Colorado and Oregon recruiting each other, there's a part of, of you wanting to show out, right? And so if you're up... And by a certain number in the fourth quarter, maybe you try to score an extra touchdown, right? Like that could be a possibility here in this game for Oregon if if they're up big at some point. But I, I do think Oregon will take care of business. And Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.